This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. The Stanford band, for example, is a bit unorthodox. Technically, they're not even a marching band. They're more of a satyr band, with their members running and screaming out onto the field in various formations. And while they do play music, it's not the center of their performance. That's reserved for the humorous themes around their formations. College football prides itself on tradition. The first college game ever played was in 1869, and right up there with the history and the pregame rituals is the university's marching band. Some of the best bands in the country are actually quite entertaining to watch. The uniformity, the visuals, it can all be quite the spectacle, and it is a nice way to fill the halftime slot. Then there's Stanford's band. Now the Stanford band has been silenced. KPIX5 Jessica Flores explains how some members are fighting back against a ban by the university. Stanford's band is truly one of a kind. Some of their outlandish ideas have really rubbed people the wrong way, and they're no stranger to being in trouble. In 1986, some members allegedly urinated on Washington's field during a game, which later led to suspensions. In 1991 versus Notre Dame, a band member dressed as a nun and conducted using a crucifix as the baton, which also led to suspensions. In 1994, some of the band members skipped rehearsal to go play outside of O.J. Simpson's trial. Members later drove a white Ford Bronco around with bloody handprints while Stanford was playing USC because it was OJ's former school. Whether they're making fun of Mormons at BYU, taking jabs at farmers when Iowa played Stanford in the Rose Bowl, or openly mocking residents of Texas at the Alamo Bowl in 2017, you get the point. They've been doing these types of things throughout their history and it doesn't look like they're going to stop anytime soon. But nothing compares to what happened in 1982. Stanford versus Cal. They call it the big game. Should come as no surprise, but we have a sellout here at Memorial Stadium, 76,000. They're the two biggest football schools in Northern California. It was the final regular season game. Both teams weren't great, but that's the magic of rivalries. If you beat them, at least you get those bragging rights for a season. There was 53 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Stanford was down by two points with the ball, but they were all the way back on their own 13-yard line. They had put themselves in a do-or-die situation. If Stanford loses, it'll be the last game John Elway ever plays for them. Here's the game, fourth and 17, back at the 13-yard line. Bears start to peel off. Elway back to throw inside at five. He's got to get this one. Looks way down. Stanford somehow did it. Elway just led a miraculous drive. With only four seconds left, Stanford's about to walk away victorious. They just gotta kick it short, play it safe, and make the tackle. Armin will probably try to squib it, and he does. Ball comes loose, and the Bears have to get out of bounds. Rodgers along the sideline, another one. They're still in deep trouble at midfield. They tried to do a couple of... The ball is still loose! Amazing, sensational, dramatic, heart-rending, 
exciting and thrilling finish in the history of college football. Total pandemonium. Let me show you the insanity of this last play. After the second lateral, this was the most critical part of the play. Five dudes surrounded number 42. Once he got rid of it, it turned into a major advantage for Cal. Ball is still loose as they get it to Roger. They give it back now to the 30. Now this guy just blindly tossed the ball back and luckily his teammate happened to be there. It just makes me wonder what's going through these players' heads when they look up and notice the sea of red that's pretty much blocking off the goal line. This raises a very obvious question. Why was Stanford's band even on the field? The band was already at ground level just behind the end zone, and they planned on playing a song and walking on the field the very moment the game ended. Going back to the third lateral, you can see that this dude put his arms up in celebration. This seemed to be enough to trigger the band to rush out on the field and begin playing. Stanford alum claims that there was either a forward lateral or one of these players' knees was down before he pitched the ball. Wait a minute. It actually does look like his knee may be down here. A few days later, the Daily Californian, which was Cal's college newsletter, revealed this story. The NCAA was apparently awarding the game to Stanford. They decided to take away that crazy touchdown at the end. Cal students were in shock. How could they possibly reverse the decision of who won the game? It had been three whole days. Turns out, students who wrote for the Stanford Daily had published a fake version of Cal student newspaper. They had distributed over 7,000 copies across Cal's campus. Just one year later, Stanford's head coach Paul Wiggin was fired after going 1 in 10. Apparently, the play had a big effect on the program, according to Wiggin. Some people did blame the band. And on top of that, their former athletic director took a shot at them later on, saying, quote, it was typical that they would have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. For the next few years, Stanford's band members had it pretty rough. But let's be real, no one had it worse than the dude who got ran over in the end zone. He was completely blindsided. So I gotta ask you a question. Have you wanted to create a website to promote your work? But like me, you can't code and you just lack any skill to do so. Listen, Squarespace has got you covered. It's incredibly simple to get started with a variety of templates, marketing tools, the ability to set up and transfer your domain. Plus they have amazing customer service. So it's honestly the best place to go to promote your business. Go head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com forward slash KTO and you will get 10% off your first purchase. Big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'll see you guys next time.